Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Mike Baghdadi. I'm very happy to be here, and I want to thank uh, FX Street for this opportunity. Okay. Uh, what well, today is well, at the beginning of a series of uh, the pleasure is all mine. Mo, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, today is a series of uh, four lectures uh, on price behavior and. Okay. Uh, so, let me give you a brief uh, description of what I mean by price behavior. Uh, but before we get there, just quickly, uh, if you have any questions, because this is a, a new topic for most, uh, if you have any question, uh, I will, will I think we'll have about 15 minutes or half an hour at the end of the session uh, for question and answers. So, if you'd be so kind, just hold the questions for the first half an hour or so, and then I will definitely do my best to answer them all. Uh, if not, you can send an email to uh, info spyglass, uh, and I'll be more than happy to answer all your emails. And I will take these questions also in the following session next Wednesday. We, I will also invite you uh, on Sunday, every day, every Sunday at 7 o'clock London time, we do a two-hour, uh, of course, you just welcome as our guest to do our week preparation, planning all our trades for next week based on price behavior. So it could be a nice continuation to the uh, explanation I'm going to give you today. You will join us and these we have, uh, you'll see all the traders planning our trades together. And I will, at the end of the session, I will put the links for you uh, again, okay? And we're also on the 13th, we have a whole day of uh, day trading where we all trade live money and we spend, we trade the London session and we trade the New York session. So you're all very welcome to attend at any time. Okay. Now, what's price behavior? Today we're going to cover the fundamentals of price behavior. What is price structure and chart structure and how to identify the market conditions because it is crucial for us to know what market condition we are in before we are going to trade. You cannot trade the same way every single day. Today, as you all know, trading has become, all the sophisticated traders and investors, trading has become a function of, I will take a technical indicator and if I have a crossover, I'm going to buy, I have a, a divergence on the MACD, I'm going to sell. And these have now become the essence of our trading. Every trader now has become proficient and excellent in trading the indicators while they have disregarded and neglected or for whatever reason understanding what price behavior is and the chart structure because these are the tools that puts the odds on the side of the trader and make him trade much better. Trading today, uh, my friends, have completely changed. When I started trading 32 years ago, things were much slower and much clearer. And today, the number of traders that are coming into this market every day is tremendous. The, the, the numbers are expanding exponentially. And they come in with ideas and rules and trade, and they affect with their volume the short-term movement in the market. And that's why you see this. In volatility that comes in, and it's because people are coming in and out of the market. Two, there is now the, the high-speed internet that the big banks and the exchanges, they are now fighting between themselves on who gets his order into the market first. They are fighting on the nanosecond. And that nanosecond makes a difference, especially if you're trading 50 million, 100 million, and if you get your order in, before the other guy, then you are going to get the liquidity, you're, get, you're going to get your order executed, and you're going to have a better odds or more successful trade. And that, of course, gives us all the gyrations that you see in the foreign exchange market. Third, we have this anonymity. In the foreign exchange by itself, I mean, nobody knows, I mean, in the, in the market, but now it is a very big thing. All those major banks and market makers, they intentionally do not want to show their intent. They do not want to show you that he's buying 50 million or he's buying a yard or selling. 
They don't want to show you that because they want to take advantage of the market. It is not in their best interest to do that. Last but not least, and this is the thing that concerns us most, is that all the quantitative analysts, what we have now, what is known as algorithmic trading or computerized trading, traders now begin, the programmers come with certain assumptions saying, how can we make money? They come up with assumptions if, for example, the moving average, the 25 and the 50 period moving average crosses over, then most of the traders are going to buy. So now they try to find ways to buy before the traders that are using the indicators. So in the old days, the indicators was to our benefit. Today, using those indicators by themselves are now to our detriment. It gives somebody else, those people that are using the algorithmic trading, it gives them an advantage over us. And that's why you have all noticed maybe that when you're trading and you take a crossover, suddenly you believe that the market is going up, you take the buy, and suddenly the market turns around and it goes the other way. Why? Because they are coming in, they are buying at the signal, and once we follow them by making the indicator which is a derivative of the price to move forward or to go higher than they exit the market and there is nobody that is going to keep the prices going up. So what I want to welcome you now is to a new way of trading. This is the way now for us, the small traders. When I mean small, I mean you can, I know some of you are trading large size, but compared to the foreign exchange market, even Bill Gates is small. Uh, so this, what I'm sharing with you now, is what I, is what's back to the future, going back to the essence of trading, so that we can understand the price, the price behavior, so that we can become successful. I want you to take a second, all of you, uh, and I want you to look at this chart. I deliberately removed the name, the price, everything, and I want you to at the question mark type. I want you to decide if you're going to be a buyer or a seller. And I just, I'll give you one second, and this is not a quiz, this is not a test, nothing. There is no right answer, there is no wrong answer. I just wanna, I wanna, sh I wanna walk you through the process, I want you to live with me the exercise. So if you could please say, oh, buying yourself, thank you. Just be, a, okay, good. Alright. I'll give you a couple of more, alright. Okay, there are a few buyers, and the majority of the people are saying selling. Okay, I'm going to put some indicators for you. It's okay. I, I know you're all very smart people. I just want to show you. I'm, I'm, I'm walking you through the process. I exactly, uh, Bookie, so I put some indicators for you. Uh, the Stochastics, the MACD, and the uh, RSI. Did anybody change his opinion, or you're still mostly selling? Okay, Joe. <laughs> okay, good. All right. So, if I am going to study price behavior, I need to understand what price is in the first place. The first thing I need to know what price is. Price is the collective perception of all traders, all who are buying and selling in this market. They have a perception what the price is. And if this collective perception changes, then the price is going to change. If, for example, at the lows of the chart, if the sellers that are pushing the market down are no longer willing to sell it at a cheaper price, then and they are now demanding a higher price, and the buyers are willing to pay that extra price, now they are willing to pay higher, what will happen is that the prices will stop going down and the market will turn around and go up. And in an uptrend or if the prices are near the high, if the market goes up and the buyers at the highs refuse to pay anymore, this is as high as they are willing to pay. And at this moment, the sellers decided to make a discount and they're, they're willing to sell it at a lower price, then the market is going to turn around and fall down. This collective perception, which is the price, 
can always take a life of its own. It is can completely take a life of its own, and that's what pushes the market all the way to the extreme, either to the upside or to the downside. Now, if the market is the collective perception of the traders, then that perception is a function of us, you and I, or our human emotions. We all know that the market is driven by human beings. Uh, we have our fear, our greed, our uh, all our psychological emotions, and we also are making our human errors, and we also have some super, superhuman insights. People can pick the tops and the bottoms. But in order for us to be able to trade successfully and understand the price, we have to understand the human mind and how it functions in these different situations. If they are make rejoicing, making a lot of money, if it is in euphoria, they have been successful and a trader has been in a win on a winning streak, or if he's under duress and he's losing money or he has been having a, a rough ride. People always behave in the same way. And under pressure, under pressure, they make the same errors in judgment. They rarely make a complete rational decisions when they are under pressure. They make poor assessments of their risk. They don't calculate risk. They, they just let it wide. They cannot predict or cannot find the probable the market direction if it's going to go up or it's going to go down. And then they end up getting caught in a bad trading situation and they need to get out. They are getting stopped out. So they need to pay whatever the market demands of them in order to get out of this bad situation. These human emotion guys always manifest themselves in the price chart. We can see them, we can see these emotions in the price action, and we can point them on the charts. And then within those four lectures, I'm going to teach you how. Our success as traders depends on our ability to understand how these emotions would affect the price action, and how we can take advantage of these opportunities. Successful traders, successful traders, mark, mark my word, guys, successful traders are always looking for these opportunities that arise from these human emotions and from trying to find where other traders are making errors in judgment. These human emotions and irrational way of thinking creates the repetitive patterns that we see on the chart. These repetitive patterns we can identify. We can identify. We can gauge. And they give us the ability to see the opportunities so that we can make money. Uh, one minute, Jack. I will answer all the questions at the end of it. Our collectiveness, we are millions. So, this collective perception, we can, we can see those repetitive patterns, and that is why price behavior has always worked, and it will continue to work. Why? Because price behavior is a function of human beings, and human beings will do the same thing and the only constant in the market, the only one thing constant in the market for the last 5,000 years, and it's going to remain constant for the next 5,000 years, is you and I. The way you and I identify opportunity, the way we react under pressure, the way we can uh, get out of our trade, all the way the, what we behave is what is the only constant element in the market, and that's, that repetition makes us, is consistent, and it gives us the, what is known as the edge. The edge, what is an edge? If you want to become a successful trader, you must 
take a trade that gives you the edge. And this is practical stuff, guys. This is not theory. I'm going to show you all that stuff. Everything that I'm telling you here is that we do day in and day out, and I've been doing it for 32 years. This is practical. Trading with an edge is what differentiates the professional from the amateur. A professional will not take a mediocre trade. A professional will always take a trade that has a high probability of winning because he trades in risk. So the edge is a setup that you can see on the chart that gives us an ex a statistical, it gives us, it has been repeated several times, so it gives us a statistical advantage that, for example, every, it works seven times out of ten. So you and I can count that this setup has an, will give us an edge. Every time we take this setup, it is going to work more time than it does not. And these setups will always occur again in the future, and the best setup come up, comes or from the market behaviors that is based by or caused by human emotions. We all need five elements in order to have an edge in our trading. You need five things. First, you need a specific set of rules or methodology or a way of trading that is well articulated and defined, and I'm going to give you all of that within the next four lectures, okay? Because after today, after that, we're going to be trading together and I'll show you the trade. So you have this well-defined rules, articulated, you know exactly what you're doing and why, and you're following these rules in order to be consistent so that you can do more of the right thing and less of the things that are not working well, because trading is a skill, and the more you practice doing the right thing, the more you sharpen your skill. And you have to be persistent by the way you're trading. You have to be persistent about being consistent. And of course, you have to keep it simple. The more simpler the system, the better it is. You need optimum entry. If I have a signal, I have a buy, I want to buy it at the best possible price. Because I want to take the trade that's going to move in my direction in the shortest period of time. If I buy, buying is not enough. If I buy something and the price goes up, even though I might have paper profit, my time, my maxim, to maximize my rewards, I have to close the trade. So I have to combine my, my entry signal with an exit signal. Third, I need to have a portfolio selection. What am I trading today? Should I be trading the euro dollar every single day? Should I be trading the Aussie every single day? Or the pound yen? As a trader, you, like I showed you the chart, you have to be able to trade anything. The name of the instrument is the last thing that you look at. You want to know the subtleties of that instrument. But as a trader, you can trade anything. Why? Because you have a specific rules, you follow a methodology, and you're trading human behavior, and the human beings, you're not trading the instrument, you're not trading the euro dollar, but you're trading the traders that trade the euro dollars. And these traders behave in a consistent way. And of course, you need to have a, if you can have an automated system that executes your orders in a way that follows the same specific rules that you are using in your trading so that you understand exactly what the software is doing and what your computer is, what signals it is giving your computer. Because you do not want to leave your mechanics of trading to your emotion. Because sometimes if you're on a winning streak, you'll be taking too much risk. So instead of your being cautious, you are being reckless. And instead of being when you need to be courageous or you need to be bold, you feel that you want to be holding off or you might decide you're not going to take a trade. There are many places on the chart we can find the edge. Um, so, for example, like support and resistance, peak, significant points. All these are areas or breakout points. All of this, we're going to break these uh, elements for you, but I'm showing them to you here because they're going to be recorded. Uh, all these, we're going to go through them in a practical, uh, on a, a step by step. Now, we always, when we look at a chart, 
like the chart I showed you in the beginning, you always want to think of probability. Why do you want to think of probability? For two reasons. One, nobody knows if it is going to go up or down. Nobody. Every trade can be a winner and every trade can be a loser. But you only want to take the high probability trade based on the rules so that you can continue to become successful at the end in the long run. We do not try to predict the market direction. The newcomers into the market, everybody will say, I think the dollar is going to go up or they think the dollar is going to come down. They are trying to predict the future. And if they're right and the market goes their way, they are geniuses and they are happy and they are excited. And if they predict that the market is going down and it turns around and it goes up, they feel that they feel lousy, they, that they couldn't read the market and they put well, nobody knows which way it, go, it, it should be going, so why should you put that burden of predicting on your shoulder? You have, you need to be reactive. If something happens, then you're going to be a buyer. If that happens, I'm going to be a seller. So we are going to be reactive. A professional trader that goes into the market every single day is not there, he's not making, he's not putting his kids through college by predicting the market. He's there reacting to the specific rules that he has set to identify his entry, to identify his exit, and only to take the high probability trade. And the key is to be consistent. Trading, guys, is simple, but it is not easy. It takes a great deal of time and study before one realizes how simple trading is, but it takes many years, and I hope by these lectures that will avoid you those many years because we have gone through it so that you can come to grip that keeping things simple and not losing sight of the basics is what's going to make us money at the end of the day. All right? So now let me take you to the chart, but tell you, I give you a couple of points. The first thing as traders, we need to be able to multitask. We need to collect every single piece of data that we see on the chart, listen on TV, everything. We have to collect all this data. We have to be able to analyze it in a second. Just a second, so I didn't say I didn't say change your mind and get whips out. I'm not saying that. I said you have to have specific rules to get in and specific rules to get out. So you're not changing your mind. You're following a methodology. You analyze the data and then you make a decision. And after you make your decision, you have to act upon it. And the faster you act upon it, that will give you will give you a better entry. Again. Now, you have two responsibilities. Yes, question at the end, guys. I don't want to lose my train of thought. I will answer every question, and if you don't have, if I cannot answer it today, I will push my email address, and I will have make sure that we send you a response to all your questions and address them again in next Wednesday, okay? As a trader, you have two responsibilities. These are the only two responsibilities that you have that you can control. One, you know how much you are going to risk on this trade. I am going to risk 10 pips. I'm going to risk 50 pips. So you identify your exit. And if you're trading one mini, then that 50 pips means $50. So you're quantifying it. If you're trading one lot, then that 50 points means 500 bucks. If you're trading 10, then this 50 points is 5,000. So you identify your risk and you quantify it in dollar amount. So you know exactly what you're coming in. And you have to accept it. That is what I'm betting on that trade. That's my, that is my risk on that trade. That's the number one thing that you can, you must do. That is your responsibility. And that's the only thing under your control. That you control 100% unless you got slippage. The second thing is that you must take only the high probability trades. And I'm going to give you the rules so that we can identify those high probability trades. These are the two jobs and you have to be good at them and perfect them. Okay, so we're trying to look at the charts to identify based on what is the future the possible direction or the high probability direction of the price. Is it going to go up or down? 
And we have to accept that the price, if we're now going to follow the rules of price behavior, we have to accept that the price is the leading indicator. It gives us the immediate psychology in the market. We can tell if people are bullish or bearish, if they're excited or they are disappointed. We can find all of that from the chart. Reading the chart is much easier than what you think. And everything that is already represented in the chart, and it gives us an idea of supply and demand. I'm just going to refresh your memory by the, the three rules of technical analysis of the basis of the theory. The first one is that the market is a discounting mechanism, that everything that is known or knowable is in the price, and that the smart money already knows what's going to happen in the future, and they are now, before the news comes out, they are either buying before the news, or if the news is bad, they are selling before the news. And let me give you a, an example. How many of us, for example, if the guys that have a stocks or trade stocks, you see that the company comes up with fantastic earnings and then they expect that the price of the stock to open $5 up, as soon as the company comes up with the fantastic earnings, they see that the price of the stock crashes down. That is why the market is a discounting mechanism. I'll give you another example. Take a look at this chart. This is the chart of the dollar yen. In uh, March, 2000, March 18, 2008, as you all recall, the, uh, the Federal Reserve Bank cut the interest rate by 75 basis points. That is the biggest cut in the history of the Federal Reserve Bank. And all of you are professions, you know, when they cut the interest rate by, they cut it on average of 25 basis points. If they cut it three times as much, that would indicate that the dollar should crash to the downside. But since the market is a discounting mechanism, before this is where the news came out, and the market was coming down the 200 points before the news came out. And as soon as the market came out, and the news came out that the Federal Reserve is cutting the interest rate by 75 basis points, this is, this is 2.15 on Tuesday, that's what happened to the dollar. It rallied 200 basis points from 98.30 to 130, to 100 yen. Just accepting the fact that the essence of the theory that the market is a discounting mechanism and you don't wait until the news comes out to sell it, on the contrary, you should wait to see how the market is reacting to the news because it is a discounting mechanism. The other part of the rule is that the second is that the market, the prices move in trends and the trend moves in waves. We have two kinds of waves. We have what we, and this, it, it doesn't matter what time frame you're trading. This rules apply on a five minute chart, a one minute chart, a weekly chart, a daily chart. It doesn't make any difference. The price structure and the chart structure is constant. It doesn't change. There are human beings that trade the one minute and the same, different human beings that trade the five, the 15, and so on and so on. And as I said, we are now going to learn how to trade those people. I will answer it, uh, trader, in a second after I'm done. Okay, I might as well say that. The market knew that they're cutting 70 basis. I'll show you back here. They knew, this is when the news came out. This is before it. They knew that they expected that the news is coming out 75 basis points, so they started selling the dollar all the way down. Right here, this is the worst it has been. So the news now, if when they cut by 75 basis points, it's a non-event. Now they are getting their money, they're taking their profits, and that is the rally. The market discounted the news before the news comes out, uh, trade the dock, okay? So, now, the market, again, the price moves, as I said, in, uh, no, I'm back, I came back. There you go. The price, again, the second part of the theory is that the price moves in what's known, in the price movement, if you will, is done by what's known as trends. And the, the trend moves in what's known as waves. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So we have waves, two kinds of waves. 
and this is very important because this is now we're building into the rules. There are two kinds of waves. One we call impulse wave or momentum waves or explosive waves. These waves are in the direction of the trend. Here? No, I'm coming back to it. I'm coming back to it. Book. These trades, these waves are the ones that tells us which way we should be trading. The impulse waves is what tells us which way we should be trading. The corrective waves are the waves in the opposite direction of the trend, and these are the ones that give us the opportunity, that give us the gift, so that we can buy in the direction of the trend at a cheaper price. Once a trend is in motion and it goes on, and you have to accept this too, you have to accept this too, the market will continue in the same direction. It will never, rarely, 99% of the time, never changes on a dime. It will take a great deal of time and a great deal of effort to change its direction. They will always be trying to to come to trade in the direction of the trend because the perception of the traders is still bullish or vice versa. And we discussed that before that we as traders will do the same thing over and again, over and over again. And this on the chart gives us the same pattern. Okay. What you're going to see here, this is what I call the anatomy of the price action. This is like the, when you go to a, a doctor's, office you see the the anatomy of the hu of the human body there and you see the structure of the man this is the structure of the price this is the anatomy of the price and this is how we should be trading the market okay the market is always in three conditions these are the only three conditions that's in the market i told you trading is simple but it's not easy there are only three conditions so there are three mindsets that we have to trade. Either the market is trending, either from point A to point B, all the way up, pushing, making a high, coming down, making a higher high, coming down, and that is my upward trend. Or it is consolidating, moving sideways, failing, and then changing direction. Or it is in a downtrend, making lower highs and lower lows until it gets until it gets into a consolidation and then it reverses the beauty of the chart is and the beauty is that what works on the upside works exactly on the downside there is a little bit of exaggeration in the move to the downside but the same principles apply if we're looking at the trend we all know that the trend, and I'm giving an example of an uptrend, is a series of a higher highs and higher lows. The operative word here, guys, I'm sure all of you know that the trend is a series of higher highs and say, what is he saying to us? The trend is higher, higher, higher lows. But here is what we're all forgetting. A trend is a series. A series means more than one. I'm having multiple higher highs. So if I can identify that this condition here is a trend, then this will be my first high. I would love to buy it, worst case scenario, because I'm going to get a higher high, and then I'm going to get a higher high, and then I'm going to get a higher high. So if I am able to identify the trend at its inception, then... I know I'm going to get multiple highs, so I can be a buyer rather than a seller. Another fact that you can see by looking at the chart of, of this here, the prices have moved from point A to point B. That is my trend. It moved from A to B. But while it is moving this journey, it never ever moves in a straight line. You can never see, and I can guarantee you that 100% of the time, and I mean that 100% of the time, you will never ever 
see a chart that is moving in a straight line. It always zigzag. It pushes up and it comes down. It pushes up and it comes down. And if that unpredictability is so predictable, then you have a system. Because you know after a push up, it is going to come down and then it's going to push up again. And that is one of the rules. Anyway, I just move it. So, that not moving in a straight line is a simple truth and it tells the trader that there is no reason for us to pick tops or pick bottoms because if I have momentum and if I have a trade in the direction of the trend, then I always want to be a buyer if the momentum is to the upside. So every move in the opposite direction is a buying opportunity for me. I don't need to pick the top in order to go short. So before we trade, and you can write these questions down or we can send them to you because this is very important. Before you take any trade, you have to identify the market condition. Are you now in a trending market? And these are all yes or no questions. You do not put a, a narrative. You don't say, I think it is trending, but it might stop, or I think it's going up, but it might weaken. No. If it is up, it is up. If it is down, it is down. These are yes or no questions. Because you have to have that decisiveness when you pull the trigger to take the trade. So what's the market condition? Is it trending or coming, moving sideways? Trending. If the momentum is increasing to the upside or not? Yes or no? If, if what is the direction of the major trend? Is it up or down? You want to see if there is any buy or sell climax. I'm going to show you all that in the chart in a second. And you have to ask yourself, do I have any buy or a sell climaxes or anything that tells me that the trend is changing its direction? If the answer is no, then that's you want to be trading into the direction of the trend. After you place your trades, after you in, let's say we have all the answers are yes and the market is going up and we buy, and now we own it, we have to say to ourselves, what is my expectation? Why did I buy this trade? Because I think it is going to go up. That's my expectation. I'm expecting a volatile move to the upside. I'm expecting a big push to the upside. So that's my expectation. Then I'm going to look at the chart. Is the prices moving to the upside in the same mode or fashion that I have expected? Is it moving as per my expectation? If the answer is yes, stay in the trade and allow your trade to mature and pay you. If the answer is no, then get out. Okay. This is back again to the same chart. Let me go in now to take the trade station. Uh, I will... Let me just go through this. Uh, the market, when it begins to move, the prices, if you look at this chart here from where I have this uh, mouse to the low, it's always is what we call between, and this is the all-time low, if you will, or the low of the move, and this is the high of the move. The prices moves in a stair-stepping kind of a fashion. After a big move, we get into a pause, and people will tell you that this is a correction Somebody calls it a backing and filling. Somebody calls it uh, an equilibrium zone. These are all correct names. But the psychological aspect behind it is what we call price acceptance zone. And what is price acceptance zone? Think of this here, the price here, as gold, for example, six months ago when it was trading at $750. After... It moved up to 800. People had to wait. The prices had to stay around the $800 level for several weeks or even months until everybody in the market have accepted that the fair market price or the equilibrium price for gold is 850. And once everybody accepts that this is now the new equilibrium price. A new wave of buying comes into the market. 
And that's what pushes the prices higher, like what happened a few weeks ago. It took it to the 950. And then it has to wait for a while at the 950 until everybody accepts the 950. Today, the gold is trading at 1,050. Wouldn't we all have wished that we could have bought it at 950? Would have been geniuses today. But if the people that accepted that the 950 is a fair price, and they started jumping on gold and buying it, now they are here at the 950, or uh, the 1050. So these are known as the price acceptance zones. They might be extended down, but this is after a, an extended move, or this is what we call the impulse wave. That impulse wave is what tells us the direction of the trend. And that is the impulse wave. This is the what we call the corrective wave or the price acceptance. Now, the rule that I'm going to share with you now is now we're trading the trending market. And I'm going to give you now the most important rule while we're trading the trending market. And I'm showing, going to show you that live. The rule is this. Momentum precedes price. Momentum precedes price. What is momentum? Momentum is velocity. How fast the price has moved from 100 to 150. If it moved in 10 days, it moved 50% in 10 days, that's a, high, that's a fast pace. If it took a month, it, it differs from one instrument to another. But the shorter the period the price moves from one price to the other, that is what we call momentum. So you can see it easily on the chart. You don't need an indicator. We do not use an indicator. You will see me trading with you for the next four weeks. I do not even have a trend line on my screen. We don't use that stuff. Okay? And I will train you all of you on how to do that. Momentum, what you see is this. You want to see this per this vertical kind of action, this kind of vertical move to the upside. That vertical move is what's known as momentum. That steep, that steep move. You might get a, a, a slighter angle, but the steeper the angle, the stronger the momentum. The more vertical the move to the upside, the more steeper to the upside, the stronger the momentum. So all what you want to see is a on the chart something like this. That is momentum to the upside. That is momentum to the upside. And the rule is, once the momentum goes up to the top of the equilibrium zone, the price is going to come back and pause. This here is the highest point of this momentum wave. We call it in price behavior the momentum high. That is the highest point where the momentum or the exuberance of the trader reached its peak. This is where everybody was so excited about buying it. Once you I see that, let me put the tra uh, uh, trade station chart so they can see. Give me a second. Okay, is the chart coming up? Okay. Now, right there, this is what we call the momentum high. Hold on a second. Right there, this you see this perpendicular move or steep angle move like, if you will? That is momentum. It moved from 85 to 105 in less than 10 weeks. That is a big, a 20% increase in 10 weeks. That's 2% a week. You can annualize that over 100% a year. That's a fantastic move. And what you will be looking at the chart in a very simple way, that this kind of steep move to the upside. This would be the highest high. We will call that momentum high. And the rule is momentum precedes price. That means that this high, momentum high, is going to be the first thing I see on the chart. Then the high probability trade is that higher prices are going to follow. So if I see this, the only thing I'm thinking of is to find a way to buy it somewhere at the cheapest possible because I'm expecting it to go higher. 
momentum precedes price. And as soon as the prices break above the momentum high, it is going to explode again into a new momentum wave, and that will take you to another momentum high. And right there, it puts the second momentum high. So this is now the new momentum high. And the same rule apply as long as the market condition has not changed. And how do I know that the market condition has not changed? Is because I have this momentum and I do not have anything that would indicate a trend reversal. Somebody might say, Mike, this thing is coming down. True. Now, we have said that the price is never moving in a straight line. It has to make a series of a higher high. So if that's the case, at this point, at 110, I'm expecting a much higher high. Okay, we have to wrap in five minutes. So uh, there is a, a lot of stuff that, anyway, so as you see that the prices again will push and make another higher high, and then will push again, make another higher high. Every time there is a momentum high, there is a higher high and a higher high. Um, anyway, uh, I, I will tell you that uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I can use more time. But anyway, what I'm going to do is this. Uh, you, you are welcome to all of you to come to the uh, Sunday evening session. All of you, I will put the information for you here. Uh, we go through all this, uh, and we're going to uh, explain all that. So you're welcome. Yes, it's free. Everything is free. Everything is free. Nobody. Uh, so we just go to Spyglass and come in. It's a two hours. We're going to do all this planning stuff, exactly what I'm doing here. We're doing it for our portfolio. We have hedge fund traders there. We have bankers there. Uh, we, more, there are several institutions. Uh, I don't know. I ask more if she. I mean, I don't. I mean, I'm, I'm more than happy. Uh, okay. Well, can you type in the address again, Mike? Anyway, I will type the address for you. Uh, uh, Sunday at seven o'clock London time. Sunday seven o'clock. Okay. Hold on a second, guys. So I just go to Spyglass Trading Solutions. Mike, would you please, uh, okay, hold on a second, guys. You, again, you're all welcome. We have five minutes. I'm going to put the uh, the links for you. Uh, uh, so anyway, don't worry. We have, uh, okay, here is the link, guys. Anyway, we have four sessions, and you can send me emails. Put the email my info at Spyglass. You can send me emails. We will answer them to you. We will, and uh, don't worry. I mean, we will, we'll explain all of it. It's fascinating. This is how we money is made in the markets today, guys. So anyway, so we are looking now at higher highs. So I want you, uh, Eastern time, uh, 19 minus five, Chris. Uh, so anyway, right here, guys, this is the momentum high right there. So if you look here and I ask you what is the high probability trades, right there, do you want to be a buyer or a seller? The answer is if you have nothing here that changed in the market condition, this is a normal pullback. Then exactly you have to be a buyer. And that is the chart, guys, that I showed you. This means there you get another momentum high. And again, right there, look at this. You get a another pullback. Here, I want you always to look at the, what we call the matching congestion because people do the same thing over and over again. If they bought over here and made money, if the prices come down to the same area, they will be buying it again. Okay, uh, Mike, put the... Uh, take it, put Spyglass... Just use Spyglass. Just put it again, please, because they're... Just use, use the Spyglass link, guys. Okay, so right there, this is the point, and look at the move. So buying at the momentum high, this is what I was asking you, where are you going to buy or sell? If we followed the rules that this is nothing more than a normal pullback, then right here is a buying opportunity for us to take it to the upside. And that move, as you see, it took us another 50. And every time there is a momentum high, we got a higher high, 
you got a higher high and you got a higher high and a higher high. Yes, same time, same place, Jeff. And as I said, you're welcome to come Sunday. You'll see us do this in practice at 7 o'clock. Just go to Spyglass Trading Solutions for the Sunday session. And this is where we do all our uh, preparation work. So anyway, um, so today we have covered the basic rule of the trending market. And I just want to remind you, uh, we, we have all this article written. We can send it to you in a written format if you want to read it and I'm sure and uh, FX Street has recorded it so uh, you can listen to it again as many times as you want so the rule is and this what I want you to uh, is that momentum precedes price momentum is what confirms the trend one second just momentum is what confirms the trend momentum will always accelerate in the direction of the trend. And if you see momentum, yes, I am. If you see momentum, then the odds are you're going to get higher highs. And we use that on all uh, time frames. It doesn't matter. Okay? Now, if the trend slows down, if the trend slows down, this is not a trend change. This is just a pause. They're slowing down. They have taken a pause. And now we should take that pause as a gift so that we can buy it to make to catch the higher high. Maud, tell me when to stop. And, uh, okay? So I'm going to continue until you say Mike, stop. All right? So if we go now... Stop it two minutes. Okay, guys. Uh, I, I, we have a, a couple of other topics, but uh, we will uh, we'll, we'll leave it for now. So all what I want you to leave you with today is a couple of things. First, identify the market condition before you get into the trade. Thank you, guys. The second thing is uh, <clears throat> always see if there is a momentum. You're looking for that. Ask that move the, the angle of elevation to the high, that is your indication of momentum, and that is you, what you want to be trading in its direction. So, uh, and the rule is momentum precedes price. Do not fight the tape, guys. And I will show you, oh, no charts, okay, I'm sorry. So, for example, this is how we, we do our day trade. This is that is, look at this. This is today. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm showing you this. Put the one seat. I want, I'm showing you this is how we trade. And I'm going to, these are the areas we identify the behavior, where the people behave, where the euphoria, the buys and the sell. But look at this. This to the downside, that's momentum. So momentum, this is my momentum. Black screen. Wow. Okay, hold on a sec. All right, good. This is these lines where we identify the where the market condition and the people behavior be, uh, behaves. So, for example, I want to I want you to see on the right hand side of the screen. Now you see that the price is coming down to the downside. Instead of being perpendicular up, it is vertical down. I mean, it's as I said, what works on the upside works on the downside. So, if at a momentum high. I'm looking for higher highs. If I'm at a momentum low, I'm looking for lower lows. So if I see this, I am not interested to to buy it. I am waiting for the prices to behave normally. And that normal behavior is to move into the other side up. So I can go short right here. So I can take it down again. So all what you have to do is trade what you see. Do not think this is too high or too low. But anyway... We are uh, we're running out of time, uh, so we are going to uh, on Sunday. You're welcome to join us. As I said, just go to Spyglass. It's the uh, Sunday session, and we'll we have our time. We can explain to you more of that stuff again. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Maud. Thank you all, uh, and I'm very happy that you enjoyed it. And see you next Wednesday.